Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's crack on with this. We've got a fair few nodes to get into place, so we are going to make a start. I have a basic scene here with a backdrop set up, some, a light pointing at the backdrop, three lights pointing at an empty, tracked to an empty in fact, and then I've got a few objects here which are forming my scene. They've all got the same material applied to them, so to see that let's head over to shading. I am using the Cycles render engine, so let's uh, enable viewport shading. So at the moment, this material has nothing but the material output, so it's looking very dark. Let's get rid of that rubbish so we can see what we're doing. Now, let's uh, figure out the first node. We're going to start by making what is essentially the glass casing, or the um, highly polished casing that the opal patterning will sit inside. So we'll start by adding a noise texture. So press Shift A to bring up that box and then search for a noise texture. Duplicate that by pressing Shift D. Plug the factor from one into the vector of the other. Let's plug that into the surface. We can see we've already got something going on. It's nothing like our finished thing, but we'll keep going add a color ramp and then add a glass BSDF. Now if we select all those and press shift equals that will line them up nice and neatly. Uh, what we also need is a transparent BSDF. We'll pop that below the glass and we're going to control shift and right click and drag to get a mix shader attached to both of those. For the factor we're going to use a light path and the light path output that we want to use is is shadow ray so it's the second one down. So you can see now when we turn it, it kind of it absorbs some of the light um, let's bring that back. Now let's make some changes to some of these bits and pieces. So the detail on the first noise node is going to be 15 and roughness 1. And the scale on the second is going to be 2, detail 15, roughness 1. Both set at 3D. Now we're going to add an extra point in the color ramp. We're going to set this to be quite a light gray. Let's say 0.25. We're then going to bring this one, or this color marker, over to 0.1 and increase that to 0.75. That might be a bit too light, but we can change it later. We'll leave this one as pure white and we'll drag it over to, <clears throat> let's say 0.55. So you can see now we still have some visibility through the glass, but again, it's absorbing the light. So we're not seeing all the way through it, which is perfect for now. Now, we're not actually going to plug this into the color. We want to plug this into the index of refraction. And we want to set this to multi-scatter GGX. So now you can see we've basically got a glass casing that will absorb the light around the edges. Oops. So what we need to do is fill that with something. We'll leave everything else here as it is for now. What we will do before we move on though is put a frame around that. So Shift W, frame selected, and to get up the node editing <coughs> panel. 
We'll just call this one glass. Now, attached to this noise texture, press Control T to bring up a texture coordinate and mapping node. And I'm going to go for the UV now, although we probably need the generated. We'll see. Now we need to bring that way out because we've got a lot to put in here. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is add a wave texture. Then a noise texture. Add two color ramps. So just add one and then duplicate it. Then add mix RGB nodes or one, sorry, one mix RGB node, and then a math node. And finally, a volume scatter node. Now I'm gonna plug this into the volume at the moment because that's where it's ultimately going to go. We are going to connect Vector output from the mapping node to the vector input of the wave. Same for the noise texture. Plug the color output from each of these into their neighboring color ramps. Take the colors up to the color inputs on the mix node. Let me get that a bit closer so you can see better. Increase the factor to one on the mix. Plug this into the value on the math node and change it to multiply and set this value actually no let's not set that value let's add a value node because we're going to plug the same value into a bunch of these take this and plug that in there change it to 20 I'll move this later and then we're going to plug the math node into the density of the volume scatter. Now, we're going to select everything here apart from the value node and duplicate it two more times. Now, make sure to connect up the mapping node to the vector input on each of these. Next up we need an add shader and we'll plug that in up here. Connect the next volume scatter to that. Duplicate the add shader and connect the bottom one to that. We then need a third add shader and for this one we need a volume absorption node and we need to plug that into the top slot which will drop that bottom one down okay so we've got a bunch of things we need to change here but again remembering we need to plug that value into the bottom slot of each of these math nodes. Now let's tidy this up. If I select all the color ramps, shift equals, I bring that down here, shift equals,
So there we go. Now we've got the basics of the infrastructure for the patterning going on. A couple of things we need to change first. One is the colour. Drop that down to about a mid grey. So now you can kind of see it's got that solid colouring but it's also got that layer of glass type effect on the top. Now, on these volume scatters, what we're going to do is change the top one to a bright green, the middle one to a light blue, and the bottom one to red. Now, with all the color ramps, you're going to change them to constant. And then for the values for the top one, we're going to move the white value to 0.985 and the white value on the second one down to 0.55. For the third one, it's 0.985. Fourth one, position is 0.470. For the fifth one, 0.985. And for the very last one, 0.7. Now for the wave texture, we are going to leave the settings as they are at the top. Change the scale to 3. Change the distortion to 9.7 detail to 2 and roughness to 0. On the noise texture directly below we are going to remove the roughness. Onto the second wave texture we're going to put the distortion at 12 roughness at 0. For the noise texture below that, we're going to go for scale of 6, detail of 2, roughness of 0. On the wave texture below that, scale of 8, detail 12, sorry, distortion 12, detail 2, detail scale 1, and roughness 0. And then for the Noise texture below that, 6, 2 and 0. Now to finish this up, I did make a mistake earlier. Don't take the UV, take the generated. Now you can see a big difference. And that's about it. So I hope you enjoy creating this one and have a play, see what settings you can come up with. Let me just very quickly render that out and then we can take a look at the finished result. One second. So there you go. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up and of course subscribe for future content.